is fine and today we are going to learn an interesting topic of chemistry so here we have seen many chemical changes and physical changes so what is the chemical change and a physical change if we think physical change is something the texture or the state of matter will be changed now if you are taking ice okay when you are bringing it to a normal temperature or room temperature it will turn into liquid or if you are further heating it it will turn into water vapor and again you can bring back to the ice stage how can you bring it after if you are applying some pressure then it turns to liquid again if you are cooling that liquid then again it turns to the ice so here it is a reversible reaction okay so which can be turned changed from one state of matter and again brought back to the same state of matter so that we say it as a physical change okay but there is a chemical change now if the texture of the some substance is changing now the same water if you are adding some milk to it then what happens it is a chemical change now can you separate that milk and water no you can't if you are heating it the water also gets evaporated or the milk also will be getting evaporated along with it okay you can't change the mixture so that type of substances or that type of reactions we say it as a chemical reactions which ca which cannot be brought back to the same original position now you can't separate the milk and water no the, in the same way like that we have many such examples in our surroundings now for example if you are burning a cracker okay so before burning a cracker it will be in some product form and once you are burning it then what happens it will be turning into ashes can you bring back that ashes to the again the same cracker no you can't bring it so that is what is a chemical change again you have photosynthesis so what is this photosynthesis process you uh, the plant will be absorbing sunlight and carbon dioxide and taking water and undergoing some reaction and then it gives out carbon dioxide and some glucose so this is what the pho photosynthesis now can you use that glucose and carbon dioxide again you can break them into that three different states no you can but the pro proportion might be different okay so like that this is a chemical change again the same one more example you can take milk turning into curd okay now we we generally know that because of lactobacillus bacteria the milk is converting into curd okay now can you bring back the curd into the same milk position no you can't do it so this is a chemical change now what is that bacteria doing it is releasing some chemicals into the milk which is turning into that curd okay so these all are chemical changes now in our respiration or in our digestion so these all are each and everything whatever a change we observe a chemical change we observe that all are considered as a chemical reactions okay so in the real life we have many such examples at each and every place and each and every point we observe that different reactions example for cooking so while cooking you will be taking different ingredients before cooking yes you will be taking dal you will be taking water you will be taking uh, mirchi powder salt and each and everything as differently again when you are mixing them at different times then what happens you will be getting one different product again can you separate those all differently no the same dal but what can you bring back it to the same grains type or else can you separate the salt from it no you can't do it okay so these are these all are called as a chemical reactions so which are permanent changes we can also say them as irreversible reactions we saw that physical changes are reversible but chemical changes are irreversible reactions so so such type of reactions we say them as a chemical reactions and then what is chemical equations then so whatever chemical reactions are going on when we are writing it in a formula okay when we are writing it in a form of equation then 
we say it as a chemical equation means what all are involved in that reaction and what process is undergoing and what products they are giving out if we are mentioning them clearly in a equation form then we say it as a chemical equation now let us see few examples of such chemical so here we have learned about many types of chemical reactions but how to represent them in a chemical equation form so here we have some simple formula that is reactants gives rise to products okay so this arrow mark we represent or we call it as it gives rise to because these reactants are reacting and giving out the so and so products so let us see few examples now we have taken burning of crackers okay so generally in the crackers they'll be taking magnesium okay so here magnesium so when it is burning means when burning means what it is reacting with oxygen so when it is reacting with oxygen it forms magnesium oxide okay so it is forming magnesium oxide understood so here magnesium and oxygen are two different reactants they are combining and reacting and forming magnesium oxide which is white color powder you see after burning of a cracker and one more example also we can take rusting of iron okay an iron nail will be there so which is made up of iron and what it is reacting with it is reacting with water and it is exposing to the air okay it is exposing to the air whenever any iron particle when it is getting rusted it reacts with the water or moisture and air then it will be getting rusted so what it is forming it is forming iron oxide and it is releasing water molecule and as true sorry hydrogen it is releasing so your yeah, iron oxide so because of formation of iron oxide what happens the color of the iron nail is changing to brown color and it is becoming also fragile fragile means it is easily breakable okay now in a one first iron nail a new iron nail when you are taking you can't break it but a rusted iron you can easily break it and some if it is more rusted you can even make it into powder so it is all because it is forming as a iron oxide so these are the simple chemical equations we have seen and we have different types of chemical reactions so some of them will be absorbing the heat and forming the reaction now let us take example of for photosynthesis so that photosynthesis it is absorbing the sunlight and forming the glucose without the sunlight it cannot form the glucose okay so it is absorbing some amount of heat and forming the reaction and some of them also give out the heat after the reaction now let us take have you ever observed the white wash painting to the house yes while white washing the house they will first mixing the quick lime okay while mixing the quick lime into the water it starts boiling they don't even uh, mix it with their hand because it gets burnt already it will be in the boiling state it will be very hot okay so it will be releasing lot amount of energy outside so that types of reactions are called exothermic reactions exo means out thermic means heat means they are evolving out the heat and whereas uh, photosynthesis you can take it as a endothermic reactions endo means inside thermic means heat means they are absorbing the heat and forming the reactions so these are the exothermic reactions and endothermic reactions so like this we will be learning about many kinds of reactions in our further videos so here i have told two examples for you people about photosynthesis and quick lime reaction so if you have understood this topic then write the two equation and comment me in the comment section okay i hope everyone can do it very easily and if you have any doubt please comment in my comment section and do remember to answer my question and till then keep observing and keep learning thank you